They desecrated Mecca. It lost its purpose. And you know, and I used to say we gotta bring it bring it back to its purpose. If we can't bring it back to its purpose, then what did Muhammad do it for? For humans like us to come and mess it up? For mortal men to come in and trip imams and sheikhs and mulanas to change things and make themselves feel important? No, Islam is simple. Islam is peace. That's all it is, it's peace. How can you be, and I used to argue all the time, Islam means peace. They say Islam means submit. No, Islam means peace. Islam means submit. Islam means peace. Because if you, if you submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're in peace. How can you miss that? You know, they want to wrestle with doctrines and dogmas. What's the root of it all? Peace. And how do you get the peace? By caring. I told people before, I'm afraid of the word love. Everybody say love each other. Well, love could be lust too, because the media has worked the word love so much until we got to throw that word almost away and start and use the word care. If you start to really care, care becomes a thing. And people use care more than the, the, the desecrated word love will disappear and caring will become real. Learn to care. It's simple. You know, it's not about care about who or care about what. Just care and everything will start happening. And if everybody just cares, you know what I'm saying, then the heavens care, and then Mother Nature will care again. Then the tornadoes and the hurricanes and the floods will stop because she'll know that we care. You follow? Until that time, until we can get that, we're going to have more floods, more diseases. They say a thousand children catch AIDS a day. We're going to have all kinds of things until... The, the, the aura, the energy, the persona of, of care, that people are starting to care. When you see somebody in stress, help them. But don't help them just because I said so. Learn to help them because you care. You know what I'm saying? Really want to help a person. Don't just be pushing people aside. You know, reach out. And when everybody, we all do, you know what's going to happen? We're going to bump into each other. I'm be trying to help you, you be trying to help me. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'll be trying to help you. You be trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to help you too. Let's go help somebody together. All that, everything else, all religions, all faiths, all beliefs, belief systems, they don't mean a thing if the root of it is not simple concern. Simple concern. The people of Palestine, they say, what do you worship? And they say, well, Yahweh, Adonai, in Hebrew, it means. Strip away the word Adonai, Strip away the word Yahweh. What do you worship? Strip away the name. The creator. The source. Okay, let's go. Now let's go from Jerusalem, from the Wailing Wall to Mecca and say, what do you worship? Allah, Al Khalif, Al Ali, Al Alim. Okay, strip away the name. What is he? The Most High. Now let's go to Christianity. What do you worship? Jesus. No. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. No one gets to the Father but my way, by me. Let's go to the Father. Who is his Father? The Most High. So where's the conflict? The conflict is in men, mortal men who want a monopoly on human souls. And they're our, they're our greatest, I mean our greatest enemy is, uh, is dogma, is doctrine, it's philosophy, it's interpretation, it's tafsir. This is our biggest problem when men come in and feel they got to tell you how to relate to God. That's the problem. And he gets a uniform, He's a clergy and he's full of color and he looks good, he sounds good and I like that old man. He got a white beard, he, he got the God look and I forget God for him. And he gets so used to being a reverend and so used to being an imam, so used to be a Kohen or a rabbi, he gets this God complex. And eventually, guess what? Whenever I'm in distress, I go to him. I say, yeah, chef, I need to have a problem. Instead of me going to Allah, I go to the reverend, excuse me, reverend, um, I'm having a problem at home. Or oh, rabbi, I'm having a problem. What happened? Men stepped in. And they started cutting off the flow between you and the Most High. And they make themselves a focal point through you. I told people, I don't have no followers. Oh, y'all are followers of this guy, doctor. I don't have no followers. I don't want nobody walking behind me. You walk alongside of me in this world. Don't tell nobody I follow. You don't follow me. I follow you. I'm here serving you, you ain't serving me. I'm doing my best to teach you, so I'm really your slave. You're not my slave. I'm here, to, I'm just trying to pass on what they're giving me. 
to give you. He said, get it back in place. I'm just all I'm trying to do. That's all. This, this, this ritual used to take place in ancient Mis or Mitzrayim or Kemet, whatever name you want to use, thousands of years ago. You go all up in Europe and you'll find inside the cathedrals, labyrinth, where the priests, not the laymen, the priests, when everybody left the cathedrals, their priests go around in a labyrinth. You go to China, you'll see the same thing. Labyrinth. When did they pull the labyrinth out of our way of life? You know why? Because everybody there right now is on their own personal journey. There's no preacher up front telling them what to feel. No, no rabbi directing their emotions. When you get over under that sprinkle and that sprinkle of water touches you, then it's just you and the Most High. And you know it. And you feel it when you're out there. There's nobody else. You don't need no reverence. You don't need no rabbis. You don't need none of those things. You have a direct contact, a direct link to the Most High. And if you let men cut it off, it's your fault. You are a part of it all. You're not just in the all. You are in all. The, the definite article, is to define the first step or the doorway into all. So you start by saying, I am in the all. And as you elevate, you realize the the got to go. I'm not in the all. I'm in all. All is in me. You're not just a part of the all. You start off a part of the all as you begin to acknowledge the all. But once you get a full understanding of the all, you no longer are a part of the all. You are the all. And that's why that, that hum on that tone is there. It's supposed to be the vibrations of creation. In ancient times they say om. Same tone, om. In Arabic we say hunna. The way we would recite the Quran in Tajweed is hunna. If you say now different people start at different times because it's personal. with the source that cares. Mm. You know what I'm saying? When someone is angry at you, don't be provoked to respond. Don't be provoked to do anything that your soul doesn't dictate you. Don't be guided. Don't be led. Guide and lead. You know, reach out and make yourself a part of the solution, mm. not the problem. 